Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and Kaldheim, the new magic set uh, framed around Vikings and gods of Norse mythology, is coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, I will be participating in the early access event for streamers, as I've done the last about a year or so. Um, as I've done with every other set, I've released a number of kind of deck lists ahead of time, uh, stuff that I'll be playing in the event. It is best of one. Uh, I get a god account, so I get to play pretty much all the cards the day before the general public, which is awesome. Uh, so we get to try out some strategies. Um, I'm filming this on Saturday the 16th, so a couple days before the final spoiler is out. But I think most of the cards, at least at this junction of time, uh, have been spoiled for these this archetype and the next one that I'll do. Um, if there is any cards that come out afterwards, I will revise the deck list um, for the Aether Hub link that's provided in the video description. Um, before we get kicked off here, if you do have any suggestions for uh, themes, decks, build arounds that you'd like to see or have your own ideas, uh, do drop me a comment in the YouTube video and uh, I'll take a look and then potentially play your deck as well during the early access event. Um, so we'll kick it off. Um, as always, if you can, like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. And if you want to uh, know when we go live for the event on Twitch, you can always follow. Uh, everything is MTG underscore Joe. Uh, so what we're going to be looking at first here is Golgari Elf Tribal, Green Black Elves. So within the set, there is support for Elves. Um, the most notable kind of omission right now is we don't have a good one mana dork. Um, but other than that, um, there have been some really cool cards that have come out in the set. Starting with Herald King of Skemfar, legendary three mana, one black green elf warrior. It's a 3-2 menace. So it has to be blocked by two or more creatures. Whenever a herald uh, enters the battlefield, look at the fi top five cards of your library. You may reveal an elf, a warrior, or a tyvar, tyvar being the elf's planeswalker, from among them and put it in your hand, put the rest at the bottom of your library in any random order. Um, so basically this is a three mana evasive creature that helps us dig for more elves. So it's kind of a... Um, good way to kind of get ahead and kind of gain value. So one of the themes that we're going to see with this deck is there's a lot of ways to just uh, get creatures from your your library, either play them off the top of your deck or get them into your hand and then just cast for more value. Um, we have Elvish Warmaster, 2 mana, 2-2. Two, two. Uh, it's an elf warrior. Uh, so whenever one or more elves enters a battlefield under your control, uh, create one a 1-1 one, one elf warrior token. You can only trigger this ability once per turn. So it does limit like the explosiveness of how many creatures you can like roll out, but it is a, a way to trigger more creatures. Uh, for seven mana, you can also overrun. So your creatures that are elves get plus two two and gain death touch till end of turn. So late game, you could just sink your mana into it and then make your army quite large. Uh, Realm Walker, this is a three mana, two three, shapeshifter changeling. So for those of you who aren't familiar with changelings, uh, it's an older mechanic, but basically this creature is every creature type. Uh, it is an elf, it is a warrior, it is a Phyrexian, you name it, it is it. Um, but what's really cool with Realm Walker is when it enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type, and you may look at the top card of your library at any time, and you can cast creatures um, that share that creature type from the top of your library. So kind of the static on uh, Vivian Monster's Advocate, um, but you can play it from that. So this is more ways that you can you know, dump your hand, but then also play off the top and accrue that card advantage. Um, then there's Skemfar Avenger. This is a 2-mana black 3-1. Whenever another non-token elf or berserker you control dies, you draw a card and lose one life. So what's really good about this is if you put out a big board, it gets board wiped, or, um, you know, targeted removal, you end up drawing cards, so each of your cards. So it's kind of like that Midnight Reaper effect, but specifically for elves, which kind of plays nice into the deck itself. Um, kind of coming through are some uh, existing cards. We have Tajuru Paragon, 2 mana, 3, 2. Um, it is itself an elf. It does have the party mechanic. We're not really concerned with the party effect, um, but really it's a pretty aggressively costed 2, two drop. You get 3 power for 2 mana. Um, and then for a kicker of five, so late game, um, you can cast it with kicker, reveal the top six cards of your library, and you may put a creature card that shares a creature type with it uh, into your hand. So it's just another way, like you'll notice all our creatures kind of replace, replace themselves uh, and give you some value. So, you know, early game, it's a good attacker. Late game, 
it gets you deeper into your library. Again, kind of similar theme. You have Line of War Visionary, three mana, two, two, draws a card when it enters, and then it helps you get ahead in terms of mana. Um, so two new cards that we have from Kyle Dime as well. We have a Sega specific two elves. This is a four mana, Herald Unites the Elves. Um, so first uh, chapter, you mill three cards. Uh, you may put an elf or Tyvar uh, card from your graveyard onto the battlefield. So this is really good because you can pay four mana, but then uh, immediately get a threat back onto your library. And it already will take into account creatures or planeswalkers that have died before then. Um, its second um, uh, chapter puts a 1-1 one, one counter on each elf you control. So if you have a pretty wide board, um, it basically increases each of their power by one. And then its last uh, chapter, whenever an elf you control attacks this turn, target creature an opponent controls uh, gets minus 1-1 one, one to end the turn. Um, so if you have five elves, you can minus 5-5 five, five and kind of do a pseudo kind of plague wind style attack through there. Uh, jumping into it, then we have Tyvar Kell. This is a 4-mana Planeswalker, 4-mana, th uh, 3 loyalty starting. Uh, elves you control have tap to add a black mana. Um, so it lets your elves kind of ramp. Um, plus 1, put a 1-1 one, one counter on up to 1 elf, untap it, it gains death touch on the turn. Uh, so you can like use Lanawari Visionary, kind of untap shenanigans or stuff like that. There's some synergies there. Uh, you can just keep spamming zeros on it and creating more elves. And then its emblem is whenever an uh, whenever you cast an elf spell, it gains haste till end of turn, and you draw two cards, which is actually really sweet because you can start chaining together a lot. Um, with all your elves tapping for mana, uh, you could kind of just roll out in terms of there. Um, so if we continue on, uh, we're going to be playing a couple Vivian's Monsters Advocate, again, playing off the top of your library, which is really good. Uh, you can create some beasts, and they can help you find kind of key pieces with the minus. Um, because we are in bl base black, we do need ways to kill creatures. Um, so I opted for the Blood Chief's uh, Heartless Act uh, split. Blood Chief just being efficient, one mana that scales and hits Planeswalkers as well. The Heartless Axe or Eliminates is really dependent on the meta. If we see a lot of counter base synergies, then we're going to want to go Eliminate most likely. Um, there is that Foretell Murder. I don't know if you really want to be investing two turns worth of mana into something like that. Uh, but your removal package, this is where I'm going to start off with because it's kind of tried and true. Um, but you can always tailor that based on what the meta looks like. And then just kind of stepping into the mana base itself, we're going to be playing one turn timber symbiosis. Um, just a way to kind of get some late value if you draw a bunch of lands. And then finally, kind of just looking through the rest, uh, we do get the pathway for Golgari, which is really nice. Uh, Dark Boar pathway. Uh, taps for both mana, another untapped land. Fabled passages some Temple of Maladies, and then um, there is Snow Cover uh, land, so we're playing uh, a mix of 10 and 1, and then I'm playing one Faceless Haven right now. It may be right to play more, and I might do that after a couple games and up that number, um, but it's a creature land that can only be paid for with uh, Snow lands, um, but it's a 4-3 Vigilance and has all creature types, so it gets all the kind of bonuses that you would from that elf tribal synergy. Um, so that's pretty much the list. I think the biggest thing, like I said, that I do want to see in the remaining spoilers, um, like Boreal Druid or uh, that one mana el elves of the deep shadow, I think it is, like a one mana elf that taps for black or taps for colorless, just something to do on one mana. There was that one mana elf that you have to tap another el a creature to add mana, but I don't think tapping two creatures to add one mana is just really going to get you anywhere. Um, I think that would be like the biggest uh, synergy. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, and as I mentioned, I will be streaming live all day for the Early Access event. Um, if you do miss it, everything will be up on my YouTube shortly thereafter. So do hit that subscribe so you get notified when all those sweet call dime decks go up. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone. I appreciate the support as always. Have a good one. Stay safe.